Hey everybody, welcome to Church of the King. My name is Alec Fisher and I'm actually our campus pastor at our Biloxi location. And I'm Annie Gambino and we are so excited to be your host today. Yeah, and this weekend we are continuing our series, Entheos. Uh, Entheos, it actually means God within. And this series is all about the Holy Spirit. Yes, and last week was so powerful. In this series, we're learning about the Holy Spirit and how we can experience His presence and power every single day. Yeah, I'm truly excited about what Pastor Steve has unpacked so far, but especially today. I'm looking forward to hearing Pastor Steve as he teaches us about the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives as believers today. But before we go into this message, it's time for one of my favorite things, worship. And I'm so excited about it, and I hope that you are too. Our online family is a global community from all around the world, seriously, all around the world, that gets to worship together at the very same time. So let's do this. Right now, press that like or share button and invite your friends and family to join you in this online experience. So let's worship together, and we'll be right back in a little bit. Welcome, welcome, church family. We are so excited to see you here today. Welcome, let's join each other and everybody joining us online. Welcome to church. We are excited to worship, so come on, let's set our eyes on Jesus right now. Let him bring to your remembrance all the good things he's done for you in your life. Come on and let's join him with grateful hearts today as we sing. You saw Satan fall like lightning. You saw darkness run for cover.
God, we've come with an expectation to meet with you. We've come with an expectation, God, to encounter your face. Meet us here, God, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. lift our hands all across this room.
lives. God, that you are steady and constant. We can trust you. God, our hope is in you. And Lord, today I just pray, God, that every heart in this place, that their heart would be wide open to receive everything that you have for us. Lord, we want more of you, more of you, Jesus. We love you and we honor you in our worship to say, in your mighty name, Jesus. We all pray together, church. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give a prayer. If you're just tuning in, we welcome you to Church of the King. I'm Anna Gambino. And I'm Alec Fisher, and we are your hosts here today. And this weekend, we're continuing a series called In Theos. And this weekend, we're looking at how the Holy Spirit can deepen your relationship with God like never before. Yeah, for example, we're gonna be learning about how the Holy Spirit helps us and how to pray better and how to become more and more like Jesus. Yes, and I'm so excited about that. And if you're like me, you probably know some people who need this message because I definitely know I need this message. So why don't you go ahead and think of three people right now in this moment that you can share this service with. Go ahead and click that share button or copy that link and invite some of your friends right at this moment. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of friends, uh, if you're here for the first time this weekend, we are so honored that you're here, yes. I, and I really mean that. Uh, if this is your first time, thank you for being a part of our online family. Yes, and an easy way that you can let us know that you're here is by clicking the link in the chat room right now, or you can text the word CONNECT to the numbers 822-822. You know, here at Church of the King, we really do love our online church family. Yes. And one of the people who's part of our online church family is Lee Bailey. Lee lives uh, with his wife in the United Kingdom, and he has been a part of our online family for about a year now. So let's hear from Lee. Hi everyone, my name's Lee Bailey. I live in the UK in a small town called Eversham in Worcestershire, where I live with my wife, Catherine, and our dog, Mia. I first found Church of the King online through Lucas Black uh, because I was going through quite a dark period in my life where we were going through our first national lockdown and Lucas Black was talking about Jesus and walking with Jesus and just how powerful and amazing it is and, and Church of the King and I had this voice inside of me saying, man, you need to go to Church of the King, you need this to be saved, like, you need this. So. I went online, found Church of the King's website, started watching some videos, started attending, and then there was a tab pop-up saying, are you new here? And I clicked it and I got to meet our very own online pastor, Simon Anderson. And every single day since that moment, he has walked with me and taught me, guided me, and just showed me what it's like to be able to walk with God and just have Jesus' love and just having the Holy Spirit inside of you. And all through that, he got, he pushed me and, and guided me through next steps so I could become an online host. And it's just been such an amazing journey because now I get to help people that are or have been in the same position I am. And it's just a blessing. And I honestly, I'm so grateful for listening to that voice of God just telling me to go to Church of the King. Wow, what an amazing story. It's countless people like Lee whose lives are being impacted every week by what God is doing at Church of the King. Yes, and one of the things that Lee did that was so special when he first came to our church is he jumped into Next Steps. Yeah. It's a way for you to get to know our staff and learn about what God wants to do in your life here at church. So if you haven't jumped into Next Steps yet, what are you waiting for? Yeah. Next Steps <laughs> happens every Sunday, and there's no better time to start than right now. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things that allows us to reach people all over the world with the message and hope of Jesus every single week is your generosity. That's right. And we always want to take a moment to thank you for your giving of tithes and offerings. Without you, we could not do what we do. Yeah. Your obedience and generosity is paving the way for lives to be changed every single week. In fact, I actually work here at Church of the King in children's ministry, we call it King's Kids, and I get to see children's lives be impacted and transformed every single week with the gospel of Jesus. So true. 
And when you give, we wanna make it really easy. And so you can give in three different ways. You can give by mail, you can give in the app, or you can give by going online at churchoftheking.com slash give. Awesome. Well, guys, it's that time. We're in part three of In Theos with Pastor Steve Robinson. So let's jump into that message, get ready, and we'll see you right here afterwards. And in the blink of an eye, a world that seemed quite familiar is now unrecognizable. Foundations have splintered, nations battered, people polarized. You face a world that appears to be falling apart, and life's what-ifs have become why me's. The thought, I thought I would never have seen the day, has already come and gone. Yet God whispers, I am with you always. our campuses. I want to welcome you guys to the third week of our series entitled In Theos. Come on, let's just welcome all those that are joining us. So excited to have all you with us. We are in a four-week series. Matter of fact, I'm going to finish it up next week. We're teaching on the Holy Spirit. Next weekend's a big weekend for the Christian church. It is Pentecost weekend. Now, if you haven't been here the last few weeks, we're teaching a series. It's a little bit of a different title. It's called En Theos. It's actually from two Greek words. The Greek word en, E-N, is translated in English, I-N, and theos means God in the Greek. So the word en theos literally means God within. I think that there's no greater series Considering what we've all gone through the last year, where people have felt lonely, they've felt discouraged, they've felt disconnected, the thought that God, by His Spirit, lives within us is a powerful biblical thought. That when we serve Christ, Christianity is more than just being forgiven of your sin. Christianity is more than just knowing that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise God for that. But we don't leave it there. We're not just forgiven sinners. We are actually been transformed by Christ, and the Holy Spirit of God has been given to us as a gift. And God the Holy Spirit lives in your heart. And God the Holy Spirit lives in my heart today. If you have your Bible, I'm going to ask you to open up to the book of 1 John, the book of 1 John. There's a scripture that we often quote around here a lot, and I think a lot of people probably don't understand the context. And John, the revelator, the gospel of John, he wrote, but he also wrote 1 John, and he said a very powerful verse. You see, I've been often very transparent about where my life was before I became a Christian. Before I became a Christian, I struggled with fear a lot. I don't know if you guys can relate to that, but a lot of fear, a lot of insecurities in my life. And, and when I became a Christian, it was this thought. It was the thought that there's a greater power on the inside of me than any challenge that I may be facing, than any emotion I may be feeling. Very important thought. You are not what you feel. There's a deeper part to who you are. Let me say that again. You are not what you feel. Emotions come and emotions go. So when fear comes, when circumstances surround you, it was this thought. John said it this way. He says, this is so powerful. 1 John 4, 4, you are of God. How many of y'all belong to God? Come on, raise your hand. I, I belong to God. You belong to God. You are of God, little children. And you've overcome them. What is them? Any obstacle, any sin in your life, any challenge, anything that's coming again, you've overcome it. Why? Not because of your willpower. Not because you and I are so smart. But because of someone, not something, by the way. A recent study by George Barna, this will blow you away, who is a statistician and a demographer. He does statistics and different things. And he did a recent poll of born-again Christians. This is going to blow you away. 60% of born-again Christians, they said on this survey that the Holy Spirit was an abstract force or an impersonal force. 
Now think about that for a moment. By the way, we believe in one God. Everyone say one God. But he has three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We don't believe in three gods, one God. But the Holy Spirit is not an abstract force. Now, some of you guys may have learned growing up reading the King James Version that, you know, you'd read Holy Ghost. My gosh, I don't want to have anything to do with the ghost. Well, that's not Casper he's talking about. That was, that was translated Holy Ghost, but it's Holy Spirit, the Greek word for pneuma. It's, it's not a ghost. The Holy Spirit. Now, listen to this. This is important. Pastor, why is it important that we understand that the Holy Spirit is a divine person and not an it? Not an impersonal force. You know, you ever walk into a room and you recognize that somebody knows you and you know them, but you're in another conversation. There's almost like a certain amount of time if you don't acknowledge them. If you don't say, it's almost like you're in a conversation with somebody and you see them walk in. You can go... And there's a moment there, there's like this awkward gap moment. If you don't turn and go, I'll be with you in one minute. If you just keep going and they know that you know, that they know, that you know, that they're there. You guys know what I'm talking about. But if you don't acknowledge them, if you don't just go, time out one second. Hey, I'm going to be with you in one minute. Hey, man, it's so good to see you. Let me just finish that up. If you don't do that, the reason why you can't ignore that person is because they're not an it. I think y'all know where I'm going with this. How many times as Christians, we ignore the Holy Spirit because we think the Holy Spirit is a, an it and not a divine, say it, person. Well, I think some of y'all just got that just now. When the Holy Spirit, that's why we say, welcome. Everyone say, welcome, Holy Spirit. What are we doing? We're acknowledging the Holy Spirit. Well, that's what John said. He says, greater is it because he, not it, because he, everyone say he. He who was in you, in theos, he who was in you is greater than he that is in the world. The very spirit of God that drove out fear, insecurity, and I got to tell you, there's times I feel inadequate in my life now. I feel inadequate. I feel like, my gosh, I feel like I'm over my head. I know that some of you, maybe some of you can relate to that, but the truth, the Bible truth, the Bible truth that there is a spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, a divine person. The Holy Spirit thinks. The Holy Spirit feels. Another word for feelings. Don't quench. Don't ignore the Holy Spirit. When we begin to recognize the Spirit of God who lives within us as believers, something happens in our lives. Today, I want to talk to you about three different ways that the Holy Spirit relates to humanity. And the way I want to do it is I want to talk about three different Verbs, three different Greek prepositions. Let me say it that way, excuse me. Three different Greek prepositions. I want to talk to you about the first one, and it's para. Everyone say para. And it's translated into English with. The next one we're talking about in this series is the Greek preposition in, E N, which is translated I N. And the third one, watch this, is epe. And the word epe means upon. So it's with, in, and upon. Can you say that with me? Say it. With, in and upon. Para, in, and epe. Today I want to talk to you about the first two. And it's so important that we understand the Holy Spirit, the relationship the Holy Spirit has with mankind. If you have your Bible, I'm going to ask you to open up to the Gospel of John. So if you're in 1 John, you just go that way in your Bible. The Gospel of John. John wrote both the Gospel of John and 1 John. And he walked with Jesus. He was the inner circle. He was one of the original 12 disciples of Jesus. And, and he had a firsthand understanding, a firsthand experience with Jesus. And, and that's why I love reading the Gospel of John. By the way, if you're a new believer, begin in the Gospel of John. I love the Gospel of John. Number one, the first relationship that all humanity has with the Holy Spirit is a para relationship. The Holy Spirit is with, whether someone's a Christian or not, watch this, the Holy Spirit is with them. The question is, in what way? Watch this, John chapter 14, verse 16, John says this, Jesus is about to go away, he's walked with the disciples for three years, and he's come to that moment, and here's what he says, he says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Isn't it interesting that one of the terms used to describe the Holy Spirit is helper? Wow, isn't that powerful? 
Well, pastor, what does the Holy Spirit want to do? Well, he wants to help you. And we're going to talk about it. He wants to help encourage you in life. He wants to fill you with peace in life. He wants to guide you in life. There is a heavenly GPS system. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. The Holy Spirit wants to lead you. The Holy Spirit, why? Because he is a helper. The Greek word is allos parakletos, one that comes alongside, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, that's interesting, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you. Everyone say, with you. Now there's a transition. He says, the Holy Spirit is with you. Watch this. But he's going to become in you. There's a difference. The Holy Spirit is with you, but he will be in you. On the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, remember what I said in the very first message. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit rested. He did not live within people in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit came upon prophets and priests and kings, special, unique people that had a unique touch from the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit gave them power to accomplish certain things. But the Holy Spirit did not live within people. On the day of Pentecost, by the way, we celebrate that next week, week, a Jewish feast called the Feast of Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover. That's the day the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts chapter 2. And something happened that day. The Holy Spirit, watch this, the Holy Spirit moved from being with people to coming to live inside people. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is with you, but he's about to become in you. Question, Pastor Steve, what is the Holy Spirit relationship? What is the relationship with the Holy Spirit with humanity today. I want to be very clear. I want to be very simple and very clear. The Holy Spirit does not live on the inside of unbelievers. All people are made in the image of God. Genesis chapter 1, made in the image of God, the likeness of God, the dominion of God. But not all people have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of them. Only redeemed men and women of God have the Holy Spirit living in them. So what is the Holy Spirit doing? Well, the Holy Spirit has a relationship with people that don't know Christ, but the Holy Spirit is not living in them. a matter of fact, that relationship is a para relationship. He's with them. What is he doing? He's convicting them. Well, what is he doing? John chapter 16, Jesus says this. Here is the relationship that the Holy Spirit had with you and I before we trusted Christ as our Savior. Here is the relationship that the Holy Spirit has with all of the world before they trust Christ as their Savior. Here it is. John chapter 16, verse 8. This is a para relationship. He's with, not in. And when he, that's the Holy Spirit, has come, he will convict. Everyone say convict. He will convict the world of sin. Notice, singular, not plural. I'm going to clarify that in a moment. Number one, he will convict the world of sin. Number two, of righteousness. Number three, of judgment. Jesus spoke about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And notice what Jesus said. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is with the world. What is he doing? I'll tell you what he's doing. He's convicting them. He's drawing them. He's wooing them. What? Into a relationship with Christ. No man can come to the Father lest the Spirit draws him. So what is the Holy Spirit doing? Notice what he convicts them of. This is very important. He convicts them of sin, not sin. The Holy Spirit is not convicting the world of lying. The Holy Spirit is not convicting the world of cheating. The Holy Spirit is not convicting the world of adultery. The Holy Spirit is not convicting the world of unforgiveness. The Holy Spirit is not convicting the world of sins, plural, but he's only convicting the world of sin, singular. Pastor, what sin? It's the sin of keeping God out of their lives. It's the sin of rejecting Christ. Well, pastor, doesn't the Holy Spirit convict of lying and cheating? Yeah, the Holy Spirit convicts the church, you and I, of sins, but he only convicts the world of sin, singular, of rejecting Christ. That's so important. 
By the way, that's why we don't scream at the world about behavior modification. We don't tell the world, you need to change your behavior. We don't tell the world about lying and cheating and stealing and all those things. Why? Because the world has no power to overcome sin because they don't have Christ living on the inside of them by their spirit, by his spirit. Oh, but when the Holy Spirit comes, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts the what? The church of sins. You and I have sins. John chapter 16, verse 8. Of sin, what sin? It's the sin of rejecting Christ. I remember before I was a Christian. I mean, the Holy Spirit, man, was all over me. Uh, well, I heard one preacher say, one old preacher one day, he says, the Holy Spirit is the hound of heaven. I mean, he comes after you. How many of y'all can testify to that? I mean, the Spirit of God, I mean, he's just knocking on your heart. I mean, I mean, let me tell you, my mom and my dad were praying. I would tell people all the time, if you have parents that are praying for you, let me get real clear. If you have a Spirit-filled mom that's praying for you, you can't outrun those prayers because the Holy Spirit is like launched with power on those prayers. And yet the Holy Spirit was dealing with my heart. The Holy Spirit was with me, but the Holy Spirit wasn't living in me. And what was he doing? He was knocking on the door of my heart. If anyone opens the door, Revelations chapter 3, what? He's knocking. Here's what he's doing. He's with the unbeliever, convicting them that they need Christ, that God loves them, that God's not mad at them, that Jesus didn't come to condemn them and judge them, but Jesus came to save them and to heal them and restore them. That's what the Holy Spirit's doing. The Holy Spirit of God is with unbelievers. But when we become a Christian, the Holy Spirit moves from just being with us to now coming to live, say it, in us. Second Greek word that I want to look at is the Greek word en. It's where in theos, in God, or God within theos, the Greek word God. It's, by the way, theos is where we get the word theology. You know, like psychology, suke, it means soul in the Greek. The study of the soul is psychology, biology, the study of bio, life. And so theology is the study of God. So that's where theos, in theos, God within. So the Greek word in. Paul writes, St. Paul writes to the church at Corinth. This is so powerful. Here's what he said. This was revolutionary to people. This concept it was revolutionary to those disciples that were Jewish men because God to them, you would go into a temple and the presence of God would be there or the presence of God would rest upon prophets and priests and king. And so Jesus says, the Holy Spirit is with you, but he's going to be in you. Now, after the cross and after the resurrection and after the ascension and after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, Paul writes this to the church at Corinth. By the way, Corinth was a, a very cosmopolitan city. It's a city in Greece. It's still there today. A very well-versed city in all of the languages and a very sophisticated city. And it was also a, sea, a port city. And listen to what Paul wrote. Here's what he said. This is so important to these young believers. He says, or do you not know, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, or do you not know that your body, everyone say, my body. Now, this is revolutionary. He says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? The Holy Spirit's in you. You don't go visit a temple. The Holy Spirit's in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. Why is that so important? In the Greek culture, there was lots of temples, and they would go to different temples, and it would be there that they would visit their gods, plural. And Paul flipped the script. How many are grateful when God flips the script? He, he, he flips the script on these early believers. And here's what he says. He says, you don't go to a temple to visit God. As a matter of fact, when you trust Christ as your Savior, you don't belong to yourself anymore. You've been washed with the blood of Christ. Your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And your body now becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. In other words, God takes up habitation on the inside of you. That's why problems... That's why sin power, that's why obstacles, they're no match for the power of God on the inside of you. Greater is he that's in you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The Holy Spirit of God is greater than that insecurity in your heart. 
The Holy Spirit of God is greater than that insufficiency that you feel in your life. And Paul says, he says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. When I became a Christian, there were new desires that came on the inside of me. There was a new power on the inside of me. Now, before I was a Christian, I tried to turn over, I've turned over new leaves every year. This year, I'm going to do better. Before I was a Christian, by the way, that's why it's very hard to follow Jesus before you're a Christian. Let me say that again. It's very hard to follow Jesus. Matter of fact, it's very hard to follow Christ. It's very hard. Why? Because you have no power to change. That's why we tell people, don't try to, listen, you're in a small group. Listen, uh, some of you are trying to change so much, but you don't have power on the inside of you until the Spirit of God gives you the power to change. Had a guy tell me once, my pastor, this year I'm, I'm going to do right. Well, I'm just going to really start doing right. What do you mean doing right? Doing right is not about your willpower. It's about God's power on the inside of you. You need the power of God. You need the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. But when the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you, now all of a sudden he starts convicting you. Not only does he convict you of what is wrong, but it gives you the strength to be able to say no to unrighteousness and yes to following God. He begins to change you on the inside. Man, I'm living in sexual immorality before I'm a Christian. I'm partying. I'm doing drugs. I'm a, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit starts convicting me. That's not right. You have, and now all of a sudden, boom, the power of God starts redirecting my desires. The Spirit of God starts redesigning. Why? There's a conviction. There's a conviction. There's a conviction. What is that conviction? By the way, there were was, there was some things nobody had to tell me they were wrong. The Spirit of God was on the inside of me and started convicting. Steve, uh -uh, that's going to hurt you. That's going to damage you, and that's going to damage somebody else. That's going to, no, Steve, Steve, wait, wait, wait. I've given you the power to walk away from that and take a different path. How many are grateful for the power of the Holy Spirit? By the way, that's why we can't take credit for it. Christianity is not a self-renovation program. It's new construction. Are you with me? Christianity is not renovate. It's new construction, new foundation, the foundation of Christ and him crucified. And it begins to build the walls and the power of God and all that. Friends, I just want to say this to everybody at all of our campuses. Quit trying to change yourself and yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. He gives you the power to change. He gives you the power to change. John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father who will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. Now let me give you a couple practical things that the Holy Spirit wants to help you with today. The spirit of God lives on your heart. If you're a redeemed child of God, what does it mean? That means if you've trusted Jesus as your savior. If you put your faith in Christ and you confess Christ as your Savior, if you're no longer trying to save yourself, but you've surrendered to Jesus as your Savior, what does that mean? It means you've been forgiven of your sins, your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but you've been given a gift, and it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit wants to help you with on a daily basis. Number one, the Holy Spirit wants to lead you into all truth. Lead you into all truth. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit lives within our heart. He wants to teach us all things. We live in a day and a culture. Matter of fact, I want to go out there on the edge a little bit, even in some church circles where they, they don't even believe the Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Well, it's just nice thoughts. It's say a couple poems and the preacher will just say a couple of nice thoughts. And almost like the Holy Spirit. It's almost like the Word of God is on the same level of Aesop's fables. Good moralistic teaching. Kind of help you. Nice thoughts. Kind of Dale Carnegie-ish. -ish. It's good stuff. But, I mean, it's not really inspired. No, no. We believe that God's Word is inspired. And we believe the Holy Spirit is actually the chief interpreter of the Scripture. And by the way, that's why, that's why, that's why I had a friend of mine that took in, in college, he took a class at a local university called the Bible as Literature. And he took it from an, un, an unsaved person. It was, a, it was a man, it was a professor. And that guy had it all wrong. Why? Because it's only the Holy Spirit in you that actually can help you interpret Scripture. Now, let me give you, let me give you, a, let me show you practically what that means. All right? So everyone say, Holy Spirit. Okay, so it's the Holy Spirit interprets. I'm going to prove it to you. 
How many of you have ever been reading something in the Bible and maybe the same thing you've read in the past and that day, maybe it was in the morning or maybe in the evening, all of a sudden you've read the scripture before, but all of a sudden that scripture jumps off the page and you, boom, you see it like you've never seen it before. Anybody in here? Okay, let me tell you why. Because God the Holy Spirit took that scripture and breathed upon it and breathed it into your heart. So all of a sudden it's like, whoa, I never saw that before. Well, you have seen it before, but you've actually not seen it that way before. Why is that? The Holy Spirit helps you to interpret. So number one, the Holy Spirit, and we live, and I'm going to say this very respect, we live in a culture, they don't believe in uh, no absolute truths, postmodernism, everything's relative. No, it's not. There's absolute truth, there's objective truth, and we have God, the Holy Spirit in us, leading us not into a preponderance of ambiguity, but into clarity and truth and something that we can base our life upon. Not only does the Holy Spirit lead us into truth, but look what John 14, 26 says, and he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I've said to you. So Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would bring to your remembrance. Matter of fact, the disciples said this after, listen to this, John chapter 12, verse 16. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remember the things that were written about him. By the way, John's the one writing this. He said, there was things when we were walking with Jesus. Jesus said to us that we were going to remember these things. He says, and after he was crucified and resurrected and the Holy Spirit came, it's like these things came flooding back in our mind. Now, I want to make a statement. Please don't forget this. If you will hide the word of God in your heart when you don't need it, then the Holy Spirit has something there to work with to bring it up in your mind when you do need it. The Holy Spirit. I want you to think about this word for a minute, all right? Everybody say, re-member. What does that sound like? Okay, let's take out re, okay? Memorize. So you've got to, if, in order to remember, you've got to memorize something. So in other words, you've got to, David said, I, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. In other words, it's so important to memorize scripture. Pastor Doug Arman, who's the campus pastor at Little Creek Campus, he discipled me 32 years ago when I was a freshman at Tulane University. I was 19 years old. I gave my heart to Christ. And Pastor Doug, he taught me about, we had, how many of y'all remember three by five index cards? Y'all remember those? Okay. They're going to be in the new millennium. Man, I tell you, as a Christian in the late 80s, man, I'd memorize scripture. I'd memorize scripture. I'd walk around with those little white cards. I'd had them. I would have them. I would have, man, I would just, now if you don't know what they are, it's because you're under 30. But anyway, so I would just memorize those cards. I'd memorize scripture. I'd memorize scripture. Now watch this. I'm going to say it again. If you'll hide the word of God in your heart when you don't need it, meaning in that particular situation, then... When you do need it, the Holy Spirit has something to work with and bring it up to your memory. And I can prove it to you. How many of you have ever, I don't even have to ask the question. I know it's true. You've been in conversations with people before and all of a sudden it's like something from the Bible comes up to your mind. And you, why is that? The Holy Spirit quickens it to your heart. And by the way, either for you or for someone else, the Holy Spirit this is what Jesus said. So number one, the Holy Spirit leads us into truth. The Holy Spirit brings to our remembrance. That's why it's so important to get the word of God in our heart. Let me give you another thing the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit helps us in prayer. All of us can attest to the fact, you know, we get in our prayer life, you know, like, God bless mommy, God bless daddy, God bless the dog. I know pastor said that we have to have a prayer life. I just don't want to talk about. What do I say? I'm so grateful that the Holy Spirit actually, and I believe in prayer lists. I believe in, I have prayer lists. I have a prayer pattern. By the way, I have a book coming out called Simple Prayer where I'm going to teach you how to pray through the Lord's Prayer. But the Holy Spirit is there to help you. Listen to this. Listen to what Paul said. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. I've got weaknesses in my life. I struggle with things. I, I grapple with weaknesses, and look what Paul says. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but it's the Spirit himself which makes intercession for us 
with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Greek translation is actually in artic- in inarticulate sounds. It's a groaning. I don't know what to pray for, God. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Friends, the Holy Spirit wants to help infuse you not only with power, but if the Holy Spirit will give you thoughts and, and if you'll just open yourself up in your prayer time to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me to pray. I mean, he'll begin to flood your mind with thoughts and different people and different pictures and different things. And we, we all come to a point in our lives where, where we just, where we're, there's, we just, there's this, we just can only go so far in our own strength and even on our prayer lives. But if you open yourself, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to pray. Can you just say that? Say, Holy Spirit, help me to pray. If you'll just pray that and just, and then the Holy Spirit will begin to flood your mind with thought. So the Holy Spirit, number one, leads us into truth in the scripture. He brings to remembrance scripture we've memorized, but he also helps us in prayer. Tomorrow morning or tonight or before you go to bed in your prayer time, those of you that are married, if you're praying with your spouse, I want to encourage you. Pray with your spouse and there's times when I'm praying with Jennifer, I'm like, okay, I prayed for the children. I prayed for you. I'm not sure, but if I'll just open myself to the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God begin to flood my mind with thoughts, He'll help you in your weaknesses. He'll help you in your prayer. Let me give you this last and final thing, and we'll pick up on there next week. Three, the Holy Spirit helps us to become more like Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 29, for whom, Paul says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. We've all been predestined as children of God. God called us, and he marked us, and he he drew us out of the world, the ecclesia. We've been called out of the world to walk and to become followers of Christ, but there's a purpose. The reason why he did that is because he has a purpose for your life, and part of your purpose is not only your assignment on life to do something, but it's also your assignment on life to become someone. And what we're to become is, we're to become in our character, the reflection of Christ in the earth. You and I don't become Jesus, but we take on his characteristics. We take on the character of Christ, the kindness of Christ. Pastor, what does that mean? It means that we begin to live out the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to help everybody. You and I can't do this in our own strength. You guys remember a number of years ago that bracelet, that WW? How many of y'all remember WWJD bracelet? Y'all remember that? I understand the concept of it. Here's the concept. The concept, you've got this bracelet on, and you're driving down the street, and someone cuts you off. And right before you go into a little mini road rage thing or say a word you shouldn't say, and you're just like, yeah, oh, this bracelet, ah, go ahead. <laughs> You're a blessing, brother. Yes. Thank God for this bracelet. <laughs> How do you know that bracelet doesn't have any power to do anything? Some of y'all, they went like, yeah, let me tell you. All of us have felt that. It's not about something to remind me of a behavior, but it's about someone living in me, giving the power to actually say no to the flesh and yes to following Christ. So here it is. All right, I'm going to close with this. Everybody online, key in with me. Here it is. You guys ready? Every day, I've got a choice. Everyone say choice. Okay, here it is. You've got choice. You guys know when you go to a gas station, it's got like 87, the fuel, you know, 87, 89, but there's this like premium. It's like extra. It's like this gas right here will cause your, ga- your car to float. I'm being a little bit silly, but, but here's my point. You have a choice. And let me tell you the choice you and I have every day. I've talked about the Holy Spirit lives within you. By the way, don't miss next week. I'm talking about the baptism. What does the scripture mean by the baptism of the Holy Spirit? The power of the Holy Spirit. But watch this. The Holy Spirit lives within us, leads us into truth, brings to our remembrance gives us help when we pray. But watch this. 
It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to walk like Christ. Now watch the choice. Here's the choice. Galatians said it this way. I say, Paul says, walk in the Spirit. Everyone say, in the Spirit. All right, let me tell you why that messes people up. Let me just shift something. If you shifted the preposition, I'm not changing the Bible. I'm giving you another way to look at it. But why don't we say it, walk by the Spirit. What does that mean, Pastor? It means I have a choice. I can walk by my flesh tendencies. I can walk by anger and unforgiveness and bitterness. I can walk by that. <clears throat> I can walk by the love and the joy and the peace of Jesus, by the Spirit. I say then walk in the Spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Here it is. Last scripture, Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit, Pastor, if I choose that every day, you've got a choice. I've got a choice. You got a choice in your home. You've got a choice in your workplace. You've got a choice leaving the parking lot at your campus. Some of y'all didn't get that, but that's all right. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. It's the fruit that is the Spirit. He produces joy. Pastor, I'm just struggling. I'm so anxious. He produces peace. Pastor, I'm so impatient. He produces long-suffering with people. Pastor, I just feel like I've been mean and I've been wrong. He's the one that produces kindness. He produces goodness. He is faithfulness. He is gentleness. He is self-control. Quit trying to change yourself and yield. Yield. Everyone say yield. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask everybody to bow their heads right now. If you do not know Christ, if you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus, I want to give you a moment right now. And every one of our campuses, those that are online with us right now that are, I've got one minute. I want you just to stay with me. This is so the very first step in receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit is confessing your need for Christ. Do you know Christ? Are you sure if you die today, you're ready to stand before God? In just a moment. I promise you I'm not going to embarrass you, but at the count of three, wherever you are, at every one of our campuses, I'm going to ask at the count of three for you just to lift your hand and say, Pastor, I need Christ. I'm not where I am, where I need to be with Jesus. Matter of fact, Pastor Steve, if I die today, I'm not sure I'm ready to stand before God. Here's what the Bible says. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I can't save you, church. The king can't save you. But I tell you what I can do. I can point you to Jesus. And the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you know Christ? Do you know that you know if you die today, you're ready to stand before God? At the count of three, you say, Pastor, pray for me. I need Christ. I need the blood of Jesus to wash me and cleanse me. If that's you, at the count of three, would you just lift your hand up right where you are? One, two, three. Quickly, hold your hand up high. Pastor, I need Christ. I'm not sure about my relationship. God bless you, ma'am. Anybody else? Pastor, God bless you right there. Anybody else? Pastor Steve, pray for me. I need Christ. God bless you right there. God bless you as well. Anybody else? Pastor, God bless you right there. Anybody else? God bless you guys right there. God bless you right there as well. Church, with our heads bowed and eyes closed, church, let's pray with those that are trusting Christ. This is the most important prayer they'll ever pray. Can we pray this together? Say, dear Jesus, I come to you today, a sinner in need of a Savior. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I let go of my past. And I turn to you. I turn to the cross. Say, Jesus, wash me with your blood. Give me a new heart, a new life, a new reason to live. I'm going to pray for you right now. Jesus, thank you for the sealing work of the Holy Spirit taking root deep in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name. I want everybody to look at me. Give me 30 seconds. If you prayed and trusted Christ, all those online, there's a card that says, My Decision. I want you to let your online hosts know as well you've trusted Christ. You simply fill this out, all of our campuses, and you simply put it in the bucket on the way out. I want to send you a letter, talk about what it means to follow Christ, or you can text DECISION to 822-822. I'm going to ask everybody to stand. I hope you guys were helped. Did, it, did that help anybody today, that message? I hope so. I'm going to ask our prayer team to come forward right now. I'm going to encourage you, please don't miss next week. I'm going to do an illustration that is going to show you what does the Bible mean by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's going to help everybody. Every morning when you wake up, I'm asking you guys just to practice and just say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Our prayer teams are open for anybody that needs prayer. I'm just going to pray a blessing over you. 
Father, bless your people. Lord, teach us every day to welcome the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, that we wouldn't quench, that we wouldn't vex, that we wouldn't ignore the Holy Spirit. But we'd begin to welcome into our homes, into our marriages, in our families, into our parenting, into our leadership, into, into our workplaces. Lord, wherever we are, help us to acknowledge the Holy Spirit of God, the divine helper sent to help us in this life and live within us. Bless your people as they go forth this day in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, can we give the Lord a hand clap? Come on, can we do that? Hey, I can't wait to see you guys next week. God bless you. Wow, what an amazing message. If you just made a decision to follow Jesus today, congratulations. Yes. This is the best decision you're ever gonna make and we really are celebrating with you. Yes, and today you are made new, you are set free, and you are forgiven and wholly loved. And we're so excited to walk with you alongside of you in this journey of following Jesus. So there's a link on the screen or in the chat uh, where you can let us know more information so that we can hear more of your story and help point you toward more resources as you begin this journey in Christ. And maybe some of you have been walking with Jesus for a while now. Can I encourage you with something? If you haven't jumped in and joined our online dream team yet, today is your day. In fact, step three is happening this weekend at all campuses and online. Yes. And so if you wanna jump in and start serving others with the love of God, that is your next step. Yes, it will change your life. And we cannot wait to see how God's gonna use you as you take that step. And so for everyone, we can't wait to see you back here next week. Same time, same place. Have a great week.